Welcome back to the shop and this comment has come around five or six, seven, eight, nine, ten, a hundred times now. Um, so it deserves, you know, it deserves a video, it deserves an answer in the full scope of a video. <laughs> so, God, I'm a sad bastard. <laughs> yes, yes, I said it. Um, and I know you're all thinking it. Someone asked me, why try? If Matt, you keep on going on about two strokes are dead and, you know, it's the end of two strokes and whatever, then why try? Why are people trying? If that is true, why is KTM trying? Why are these people trying? Blah, 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 blah. Is it worth trying? Fucking damn right it is. Two strokes are, and are you ready for this? <laughs> two strokes are an, the engineering wet dream of an engine. So what you do with engineering is you have something. You have meh, this thing. And this thing something that's a bit more visual than that okay. this thing this thing does a job right but the thing is it has loads of bits so it has these plastic bits it has this rivet in the middle it has all these jaws and stuff and then it has this these two metal parts and what you try and do is you try and whittle this down you try and whittle this down and this isn't a very good example but you try and whittle this down until you have a uh, something that is cheap um, easy to manufacture, has the minimal amount of parts that will do the same job. You see, so you could take the handles off it, these plastic handles, and chuck them in the bit. You're wasting your money, you don't need them. All these jaws and all those tape, yeah, yeah, and the rivet you need, and blah, blah, blah. But then, when you have this like this, it, th these thin uh, barbs that go down into these plastic parts are really harsh on the hands and they don't work very well. So you put it all back together. You can either make them out of solid steel, just like the rest of it, or you can use plastic. Plastic is cheaper and easy to manufacture and it's lighter. So that's how you end up with this. You end up with this because it is the minimal amount of parts. There's no sirens, there's no rape spray, there's no fucking air conditioning on this thing. It's not required. It is the minimal amount of stuff to do the job. That's what engineering's about. You know, and that's when you know. When you've got nothing else to take away from it, then you know you are done. And that is the same with a lot of things. That is the same with push bikes. That's why push bikes haven't changed fucking forever. People keep on trying by making it more complicated. Stop it. It doesn't work. It's not going to work. People like push bikes because they are simple. It is a fucking airframe, a couple of airframes stitched together with some very simple bearings, you know, uh, some sprockets which are stamped metal. A fucking seat and away you go. Now there are loads of different types of push bikes, but the general I don't, I don't even know it's got a name, the general arrangement of a push bike that we all know we draw as kids, you know, the whole seat stem frame, that headset, forks, wheels, crank, gears, seat, job done. Oh handlebars. You know what I mean? That's all you fucking need. So the simple designs last because manufacturing companies love them because they are the simplest way of doing it and that's just the way it goes and two strokes are great because they do have high power to weight ratio which is what you want and number two is they are lightweight they do it in small package fuck all parts brilliant the problem with two strokes is that when we take two things into consideration emissions all the fairies and all the fucking tree lovers and what have you and when we take into fuel economy, you know, making the most, the efficiency of it, which is also very important. This is an efficient design. This is an efficient design. Two strokes, unfortunately, are not as efficient. It depends what you, depends what you want to, you know, which way you want to look at it. But the fact of the matter is, is the law is the law and emissions are the problem. But why try then? So this, you know, it still comes back to this. If emissions are such a problem, because there is, that there could be a way. There could be a way to get around it. We just have to start thinking out of the box. The problem, like more man, the, the problem with uh, the two-stroke design is that all the readily available solutions we have, injection, direct injection, uh, supercharging, separating your crankshaft bearings and what have you. You know, people say, oh, why can't you just have your bearings outside? of your main case. There's a good reason for that and I'll do another video on that after this. Um, but you know all these things, all the off-the-shelf components we can add to it is taking away 
uh, this concept, the minimal concept. It's not minimal as in, oh, we're doing our front room minimal art, min minimalist this year. It's nothing, it's not about fashion, it's about engineering. This is the great thing about these ideas. Now, we do add complexity and cars and bikes and planes and stuff are getting more complex as they go. That's because we've, I don't want to say the word mastered, but almost, we'll just say mastered, but you get, I'm not comfortable with that. We've kind of mastered the very, very basics. A plane will fly, let's see if we can, um, you know, master it in other ways, like comfort, like speed, like fuel efficiency, like noise, because at the end of the day, it is a mode of transport, you know, and we do have customers. Customers are people. People, unfortunately, have emotions, and they need to be kept in check because emotions are directly linked with money. You know what I mean? You will buy stuff that makes you happy and blah, 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 blah. Not going down that merry little road of marketing. Um, but yes, you know, we are after this, the minimal amount of parts to do the same fucking job. And that's what two strokes do. So if we can find a way of tweaking what we have, that's the optimization, it is a thing you'll hear me say an awful lot because it is now, especially nowadays, a lot of these things have been done. You know what I mean? A lot of the transportation, this bike, that car, gets us around no problem. It actually gets us, you know, the bike gets me around a lot fucking faster than I wanted, to be quite honest. You know what I mean? And what I mean by that is, there's a straight road in front of me in, in town, and I can't see anyone. I could easily squirt into a hundred down there, uh, but there might be kids and things might change, and that might be fucking horrible. You know what I mean? So I don't do that because, you know, of other factors. If I knew that there was going to be no one there, then I'd scream around like a crazy bastard, like it was the Alaman. But, um, you know, that's that's the limitation. You know, they, they actually provide us more than we actually need. Um, but again, that's all to do with emotions and keeping people happy and cock measuring and so on. But, yes, the reason why we try with two strokes is because the two stroke, if we could make it tick the, bo the relevant boxes, it would be a better engine than the four-stroke. If we could sort out the emissions, if we could sort out um, the shitty volumetric efficiency. But the fact of the matter is, we can't, at, at present, we have no solution to this dilemma, we have no solution to the problem. And you can look at, and you know, we've had hundreds of thousands of engineers. You know, you guys looking, I'm looking, everyone's kind of looking who are interested in this subject. And all of us together, can put a man on the moon, but we haven't sorted out the two-stroke dilemma. You know, people think the e-tech injector is going to save it. The e-tech injector, I want to do a video on that of why that's really no good, and we're going to try and put one of these e-tech injectors into a bike, but uh, just to you know prove the point, because it'd be quite fun as well. But um, the fact of the matter is, as soon as you start adding, and this is what I mean when I keep on saying about these videos about components and stuff, as soon as you start adding you know, a, 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 a five-speed dildo and air conditioning and, you know, a food processor and a fucking app notification device, you know, and a fucking horse whispering fucking antenna. You know, it, it becomes it becomes not what it's designed to do. It becomes cluttered, it becomes expensive, and you just chuck it away because you, you just want simple. How many times should you go, if I only had a fucking tool that just did the job, you know what I mean? A specific tool to do that one job. This is why universal things don't really work that well. Hence why there's loads of different types of motorbikes. We have race bikes, we have touring bikes, we have off-road bikes, we have cruising bikes, we have show-off bikes, we have this, that and the other. Race bikes, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is, but the, it, it is worth trying. But you will pretty much know this isn't a, this isn't a, um, it, it, it is a eureka moment. You know, it doesn't have to, well, we put this TPI injection in this KTM, and all of a sudden it solved everything. It doesn't work like that. You know what I mean? If it was all singing, all dancing, they would not be rolling it out in off road bikes and then seeing how it goes and then rolling it out in two-stroke bikes on the road. If they had a solution and it was E-Tech, they would have fucking already done it. Seriously, they would have already done it. It's like if there was a cure for cancer. I've heard people say, ah, there's a cure for cancer, but they're keeping it. Fuck off. Pharmaceutical companies make money by selling people drugs. People are dying of cancer. If they are dead, they cannot pay for treatment. If you can cure people for cancer, 
they're more likely, people who have got cancer, especially early on, if you're 30 years old and you've got cancer, you're more likely, if you survive the first bout, to get cancer again. If it's either from the cancer therapy itself, or it's the fact that you're genetically liable, not liable, ge genetically vulnerable to getting cancer. Then if you get cancer 35, you'll get cancer probably when you're fucking 55, and then when you're 70. And if they had a drug, they could sell you it fucking three times. You know what I mean? Yeah. If they had squirrelled away a two-stroke idea, trust me, they would want to be pinning it to fucking everyone. If KTM had an idea right now, um, or oh, two or three years ago, they had an idea right now, don't worry, they'll be fucking making you know, screams about it because they have to patent it and there are people in companies who literally just scan other people's patents. It's just the way it works. Um, but yeah, you know, they'd be singing, we've got a solution to two-stroke, you wait until 2020, you'll fucking love it. And then they'll bring out a brand new can, a Duke or whatever they want to call it. They'll probably do a new series, a 600cc two-stroke, and they will fucking, you know, because it'd be competition. It'd make the R1, not the not the dick and the balls. That's amazing. Um, it'd make the R1 and the GSXR. You could take them on. You could, with a 600cc two-stroke, you take them on. It's just as fast. It's just as crazy. But it uses, you know, uh, the same amount of fuel because it's a 600 versus the thousand. But it's lighter, so which means it's quicker accelerating, which means it's got a quicker top speed, which means it's ah, you know what I mean? If they could beat the emissions, if they could make the fucking thing work, and it's because we've all sat down and done the numbers and gone, this ain't gonna fucking work, is it? And the thing is with four stroke is it gives us the ability to um, optimize each individual section with two strokes. If you change this then you gain top end and you really lose bottom end or if you do this you gain power you lose reliability if you really gain reliability um, you have to oil the shit out of it and if you do that you break emissions and the circle goes round and round and round and round you know Evinrude, Rotax, all of the BRP companies have been blabbing on about this 100 to 1, 80 to 1 um, premix oil ratio saying it uses fuck all oil like Dan Henderson oh, I haven't seen a two stroke smoke since 1982 fucking idiot um, just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not burning oil have you got a nose or was you know did that disappear last time you had a fucking stroke um, you know it's uh, where was I I've completely lost it because I'm taking the piss out of Dan <laughs> yes yes so um, yeah, I've, I've read other people's comments in forums when people started going on about the snowmobiles and the Evinrude and stuff like that. The Evinrude, yes, it does run um, them kind of oil ratios, but people are having failures. But not only that, it's on the other side of things. The snowmobile guys say they're not. They're running, they're using, I can't remember what some guy said. He said something like uh, three gallons for 800 miles of oil. I went, fucking what? It was something like that, off the top of my head. I'll probably edit this if it was something... I'm sure it was three or three quarters of a gallon. I think it might have been three three gallons is massive. That's 12 litres, it can't be that much. Um, three quarters of a gallon. Well, three quarters of a gallon is three litres. Three litres of oil for 800 miles. And my head went... Phew. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's all over these grass tracks, obviously. But most of them are saying that they don't run these lean, lean, lean oil mixtures because they want their engines to survive. That's what the guys on the forum are using them are saying. Right, anyway, that's why, because if we could get two strokes to work, then it would be fantastic because they are lightweight, they do produce really good power. Even though they've got volume shit volumetric efficiency, they still get away with it. They do use a lot of fuel, which is a pain in the ass, and they're killing the pandas and lesbians and what have you. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.